can't wait for him to go because he gets that busy, you know. Right. Pardon? Yeah. The Charlotte game, the Charlotte game, they didn't. They actually left because of the rain delay because we had we had three babies with us. <laughs> so. So the. Uh, Good. Yeah. Now we're joined by head coach Phil Neville. Do you want opening remarks? Please. Good. Uh, afternoon, guys. Uh, well, I think we're approaching a real pivotal week with three, three, um, three really big games for us. We've uh, we give them a couple of days off after the New York uh, City game, uh, after the stretch that we just had, and they come back in on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And, and you know, I think in the first, probably the first time in my my time as a uh, into Miami manager, you know, I think I've got, I had 25, 26 players for training in terms of uh, uh, everyone back fit, uh, Coco obviously being, uh, getting his visa, Breck Shea being back in some kind of training, uh, Ari and Leo being in back in for parts of the training as well, even though we had to modify them. So uh, we, we, we've got real, real strength in depth now. The roster looks really thick in terms of quality and depth. And uh, I think we're approaching the, the most important part of the season, which is, is where we've got to really earn our money, where we've got to really start performing. And, and the wins are, are going to be big for us. And uh, it's a nine point week and it's, it's a week where we want to really attack. And uh, it starts with, uh, with a, uh, a really important game against uh, one of the most improved sides in the, in the whole of the conferences, uh, who, who, who obviously the coach, fantastic coach. He's got a good staff around him. Uh, and they've got players that, that are as good as probably most in the league in terms of their front players are really exciting. So I think it's going to be a real, real important game for both teams. We know where the win takes us and we know where the win takes them. And, and it's like I said to the team today is, is that uh, we've got to attack. We've got to really go for it. We, 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 can't, we can't think that it'll just be the next game, the next game. We've got to really put our foot down now and, uh, and we know what we have to do. And I think that's the exciting bit. Uh, in terms of in terms of sort of like the team selection of the team, uh, like again, I've said to them this morning that it's it, it's the most difficult bit for me will be this weekend is picking twenty players. Never mind the eleven. We're going to have four or five players missing out from actually being on the substitutes bench. So 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 it's time for we spoke about our togetherness and spirit and the culture. It's now now it's the biggest test of our culture and our spirit is that how players are going to handle disappointments and how they're going to uh, respond to that. And uh, the competition, even though we've said it's from, from, from external, the competition, the biggest competition is from within. How can you be better than your, your, your teammate to compete for your spot? And I think, I hope, and I think, and I know that that will drive the competition level. We'll get started with questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We will get started with Michelle Kaufman, Franco, and then Jose. Okay. Hi, Phil. Um, I want to ask you about the uh, goalkeeper situation. Um, what are you thinking for this weekend? You know, you Nick is healthy again and Drake, you know, what, what's your thinking with those two right now? Yeah, I, we'll have a goalkeeper in net. <laughs> 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 that I can promise you. Uh, I think Drake's done absolutely fantastic. I really do. Uh, I, think, I think that the challenges for both keepers now are is not not for drake to maintain but can can drake uh, can he take his game keep going forward can he keep stepping up to the next level and uh, that's the challenge that we've set him for nick it's about it's about becoming number one again it's about getting up to the levels we know he can get up to it's about getting back to the full fitness i think there's been a real real big big push from Nick Marsman this week. He knows that we've got big games coming up. He knows that he will be needed in terms of the challenge, if not if not the challenge it, 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 to play. We know the qualities of both keepers. And, and I hope that, that that takes their levels up to even better. Uh, Drake Callender, I think, has been, if you look at, if you look at the keepers, the goalkeepers in, in the leagues, I think he's in the top five in terms of his performances, in terms of the data, in terms of the statistics. Uh, and and sometimes you think, oh, it's young Drake, young Drake. No, his 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 ability in games, his ability and performances in games, has put him up into the top five goalkeepers performance wise in the league. So he's earned the right to stay in the team over the last month when Nick's been been gradually getting back to full fitness. Now Drake and Nick have got a real big challenge on their hands, but it's no different than the challenge all over the pitch. 
uh, you know, in training yesterday, it felt like we, we had six right wingers, six left wingers, and we had three centre forwards. We had we had eight for the midfield three positions or midfield two positions. So the competition in every area of the pitch now is is really really intense, and you know we uh, we need we need to make sure that we use that for our advantage. And it's my job to pick the right team. Next question, Franco, then Jose. Phil, so, um, what, what's the update with uh, Leo? Is he is he able to go this weekend? Is it still day to day, touch and go? How how is he looking for this? I, I think he's doubtful. I've got to say, uh, you know, with with the with like a medial ligament injury, they do linger. They they are acute. They do cause you pain, even when you think you're okay. Running in straight lines for Leo is no problem. It's the twisting, the turning, and, and it's the shooting. Uh, so I, I think he's a major, major doubt. Uh, he's not trained with the team yet this week, neither as, uh, as Ari fully. So, uh, you know, as the, as the, as the day is getting closer to the game, do you think, well, you, you at least need to start training with the team pain free and asymptomatic. And, and I'd say that they're both 50, 50 for the game at the weekend, but we have got, we have got, uh, Coco in, in, uh, back now he's trained the last couple of days after two weeks off. He's not played a game, I think since May. So, so we're going to have to make sure that when we put Coco in, we put him in at the right time when he's, he's ready to perform and not, and not leave him short. So, uh, we've got some really good decisions to make in, 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 in our forward positions. Next question, Jose. Thank you. Um, Phil, a, a big talking point um, this morning in, in the United States is um, Sacramento Republic because of what happened last night. Um, you talk about that competition, how much you like it. But my question is, how can the, um, situations like what happened last night help develop the game even more? Very often in MLS, we compare to top leagues in the world or even the guy Max in, in Mexico. But having that competition in the country, how important mm. can that be for the development of the game? Well, I, I, wa I watched a lot of the Orlando uh, New York Red Bulls game last night. And, uh, you know, I think them cup games have been my favorite games this season. You look at the level of intensity. It, it, it's do or die. It, it's winner takes all. And the crowd, the intensity, the environment, there's a smell in the air. Uh, and I've got to say, when, when you look at the standard of the... Uh, USL championship teams I think I think it's I think it's outstanding and and I think I think we're getting to the point now where where how how can how can the MLS how can we keep taking the leagues forward I, I always think that promotion and relegation is 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 part of football and there should be reward for winning leagues there should be there should be consequences for not being the best team and you know I think that would have real big carrot you think about the championship in England compared to the Premier League how much it's worth financially status wise brand wise player wise is that is that and 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 likewise for those at the bottom of the Premier League the pressure on them so I think I think I think that's where I think just just real uh, uh you know shooting the uh shooting the talk is uh is that I'd say that promotion and relegation helps competition cup games help competition and and when you see the performance performance not of not of just sacramento but all the usl championship teams the the team that we played against really they should have won the game and and the cup competitions have been i think brilliant this year there's been real big big upsets and i don't think it was a surprise really last night with with sacramento winning i think everyone thought that they were there to to compete in the game uh you know, so so I think from an MLS, I think we've got a, a, an, an incredible league here and, and we've got to keep taking it forward. We've got to keep keep making it competitive where and the cup competitions, I think, have been, you know, I think I think been some of the most exciting games. We went to FC Miami and Miami FC and, and that game was really testing. Then the game at home was testing. We went to Orlando and there's just a different feel in the air. And, uh, you know, the cup competitions, I think, are good. Next question, Ian, then Carter. Hey, Phil, you've mentioned a lot in recent weeks about uh, slow starts the first 20, yeah. 25 minutes. And uh, the first go around against Cincinnati was, it was similar, uh, going down to nothing real yeah. early. Um, looking back in the past couple of weeks, they've also been prone, though, to giving up first half goals. Where do you see the levers of success in that first quarter 
uh, of the match and, and how can you sort of change that stagnant first half offense that you've been talking about? Yeah, I think it's a really great point, but I'd also say that uh, to help us start games well, we need, we need referees to make the right decisions. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I want to help referees. Uh, I said after the game of the day, I've been struggling with them. Uh, I think we've been on the wrong end of a, of a lot of decisions that have gone against us, particularly in those opening, opening periods. You think about, to, you know, Philadelphia. Uh, I thought Bryce Duke should have had a penalty. I didn't think they should have had a penalty. The decision the other day, I thought, was a poor decision. Uh, so, so, yes, we've got to start games well, but we also need, we also need other things to go our way as well. And, and you know, I, I know that there's this thing that it, it, it tends to even out over a season – I don't, I'm not feeling that at this moment in time. And, and I want to back the referees 100%. They've got a real incredible job. And I think they're improving every single week. And, and I really want to, to create real good communication between them and us and make sure that we're all heading in the same direction. But from a competitor's, but from a competition point of view, from us, we're competitors. Uh, and, and, and we, we had a competition day yesterday and, and there was, there was four teams picked and, me and Jason, my assistant, were the referees, and we made some really bad calls. And, and we've reviewed them with the team today because we, we, we want to we wanna make sure that we're, we're preparing ourselves and we handle ourselves in a respectful way. And it's really difficult. And we've got to remain focused. Uh, but you also want the decisions to go your way as well that we feel as if we deserve. We need to start the games well. That's on us. That's the accountability on us. But we also feel over the last, since the international break, the decisions haven't been going our way. We feel, we feel as if we need to, uh, we feel as if that's been the case. Next question, Carter, then Andrea. Coach, with Coco now available, what can he bring to the team and what kind of impact can he have moving forward for you guys? Yeah, well, he's at a brilliant age. He's at a brilliant age where he's coming up to his peak. Uh, He's very versatile. He can play 7, 11, 10 as a nine, as a pinch as well. Uh, he's, he's got real, he's really quick over five to 10 metres. Uh, he can beat people 1v1. He's got really good delivery from set plays and, and from wide areas. And he's just got that big game experience that we feel as if he'll give us that composure in the final third. We've added Pozuelo, we've added now Coco uh, to add to the, to the real good players that we've got. And, and I said it before that, for Cole Coker to get in the team, he's got to perform at a really high level because we've got Robert Taylor, we've got Indy, we've got Ari, uh, Emerson, who I think has been fantastic, all performing at a real high level. So the competition's great. We've just brought him in to add to that competition. Uh, he he is a real, real, uh, you know, happy guy, good locker room guy, uh, and, and he's a winner. And we'll do last two questions. Eleanor? Hello. Hi there. Um, yeah, we're, we're coming from the UK and we wanted to ask you about the Lionesses, if that's OK. Um, obviously, a really exciting weekend as they reach the final of the Euros. I just wanted to get your reaction to kind of where we're at with the tournament. Well, I, I think. I've got to say, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm so proud of what I'm seeing, you know, uh, it's just amazing. I don't think I've ever seen a team approach. Uh, a major tournament and and have and and basically destroy every team that comes in there in the, in their uh, in their path. What I love, what I love is they're playing with massive smiles on their faces. They're enjoying the moment. Uh, I think they've got an incredible manager. Uh, Serena is one of the best in the women's game. Uh, and and personally, personally, I've got a real strong connection with these players, and 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 I'm just so proud of of the journey that they are on the journey that they're going on uh i think it was a massive massive psychological barrier that we got over by winning a semi-final you think about the three semi-finals previous to that that, that we fell short in uh and now we're in the final at Wembley, full stadiums in every venue that we've we've seen in the Euros. In, uh, you know, I think we've put on an incredible ad advertisement visibility for women's football. And and really, I'm I'm so proud of those players uh, for for everything that they're doing and achieving. When I was the manager, I always spoke about winning, but they always wanted to do more than just winning. They wanted to inspire. They wanted to 
to make sure that there was visibility. They wanted to make sure that there was always equality. They wanted to break down so many barriers. And that, that's what inspired me as their, their coach. And watching them, they're, they are, they are doing, they're, they're doing everything and more. Uh, and seeing them with a smile on their faces, seeing them play with freedom, seeing those players play to their absolute maximum of their ability, I think it's a, I think it's a brilliant thing. And the English FA must take, must take a lot of credit for the investment that they've put into the women's game. But those players and that manager are very special. And uh, I'll be watching on Sunday. I'll be cheering on uh, from, from, from Miami. And, and, you know, once... Once, uh, once you've worked with this set of players, the set of players that I've worked with, you'll be forever uh, a lioness for life, and and that's how I feel. Uh, that's how I feel, and I hope I hope we they go and play with the same freedom uh, against against a really good Germany side in a full Wembley Stadium, and uh, you know I think I think they've been a credit to everyone involved. Any last question, Andrea? Andrea? We never ask you about the lineup, but today you receiving questions with about Nick and Drake. I wanted to ask you about Gonzalo and Emerson. Are you thinking about them starting or having Coco changes that a little bit uh, that you can add him instead of Emerson? How how do you see your lineup for Saturday? Well, I've got twenty five players to pick from. <laughs> it's it's going to be really difficult. Uh, Emerson Emerson. Uh, Emerson is a real interesting one because uh, he's developing under the radar. He keeps coming on and affecting the game. He keeps coming on and playing well. He keeps coming on and sort of like he's doing his, he's doing his talking with his feet. There was, there was a lot of immaturity at the start of the season in his play and his behaviour. The Barcelona game for me was, was, was a, we sat down with him. I sat down with him after the press conference after the Barcelona game and we spoke about behaviours, about what it takes to perform at the top level. And he performed really well against Barcelona. He showed me that he had the courage to play at that kind of level by taking the ball and having the courage. And, and we then spoke about what, you know, somebody like Memphis Depay or somebody or Ansi Fati, somebody that he played against. So they do that every minute of every day, not just when it suits, not just when they play the big games. They do that every single minute of every day. And he's just becoming a real, real, real top professional. There's a long way to go. He has his ups and downs. Uh, but I think we've got a hell of a player on our hands with Emerson. And, and he, he's been at his best when he's impacted the game. With the last 30 minutes, he stretches the game. When players get tired and the heat kicks in. And we do feel probably that's his best uh, role at this moment in time. But he's, he's edging closer to becoming a starter. Uh, Coco, there's a, there's a decision to make whether he can... Uh, he's, he's only trained the last two days. And he's had two weeks stuck in a hotel in Paris waiting for his visa. So it's, it's going to be very difficult for him to complete the 90 minutes. Uh, and, and we want to pick the freshest, freshest team. So, so in the next two days, I'll see where they're all at. And then, uh, and then we'll, pick, we'll, pick, we'll select the best possible team. All right. Now we're going to have uh, Coco coming in. Yeah. 